Welcome to Eyes Wide Open, a podcast aiming a curious eye at what's new in eye care. This podcast is a service provided by Canadian Eye Care Business Review. Please visit their website at eyecarebusinessreview.ca to stay up to date with the latest eye care news and lots of great resources and articles. I'm your host, Glenn Chason. I'm an optometrist practicing in Toronto, Ontario, and I love to learn new things. And we're going to use this trait to investigate what's new in eye care and the vast array of areas that eye care providers are lucky enough to work in every day that we're in our offices. So let's take a look. Neurodynamic vision is an advancement in understanding of the power of the brain to improve overall human performance through performance vision testing, training, and sports application. Neurodynamic vision expands traditional sports vision procedures to consider additional cognitive aspects of visual processing, including response time, response accuracy, fixation stability, and visual search strategies. Their website, neurodynamicvision.org, is a curated single source aggregator for the latest in research, product reviews, performance protocols, practice management, and expert advice. Their purpose is to bring together a multidisciplinary approach between sports vision science, neurosport psychology, athletic training techniques, and advanced technologies to deliver a new level of superior consistent performance for athletes through the power of performance vision system. Today, we're going to be speaking with Warren Maudlin. Warren is a trained optometrist with 25 years of optical industry experience. He has a wealth of experience in a variety of functional areas, including sales, marketing, product development, and staging a compelling retail experience. Warren started his career as an optometrist in South Africa before moving to Canada in 1993, where he joined Siba Vision, now Alcon. He held various positions in technical consulting, sales support, product management, and marketing over a successful 13-year corporate career before leaving to start his own independent marketing and strategy consulting company focused on innovations within the medical device industry and optometric practice management. Warren joined Oakley in 2010 and worked for eight years in eyewear product development, leaving as VP of eyewear product development and strategy to start neurodynamicvision.org. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm here with Warren Maudlin today. Warren, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Finn. Great to be here. I very much appreciate you being here. I remember hearing you speak once when you were with, I guess it was SIBA back in the day, but Alcon now, and you were with Oakley as well. So you've had a pretty varied optometric career. How did you get started with neurodynamic vision? The neurodynamic vision journey started actually when I was 10 years old. I got my first pair of contacts playing a soccer game. And at 10 years old, it had such a profound effect that I decided to become an optometrist. And sport and optometry have been with me my whole life. I worked, as you said, at SIBA with contact lenses, but the last eight years or so was with Oakley. And that's the world's leading sports vision company. But I felt we really needed to provide athletes with more than just eyewear in order to improve their performance. So leaving that last year was the start of the neurodynamic vision journey where we bring science and marketing and the training together under this new platform. As I hear you, I remember how cool your accent is and I feel bad about mine. So uh, <laughs> I'll limit my talking. You, you can do the, the line share of it. So with neurodynamic vision, what's sort of your vision for that as a, as a whole and the website? You know, what kind of roles are they going to play for, for an eye care provider? I see the neurodynamic vision as the next evolution in describing vision performance. You know, if we think about a black lead on a white background describing how well we see, and that's been with us since 1862, our world is completely different at the moment and we need much better metrics. So I believe neurodynamic vision can help eye care professionals really expand their value in a highly competitive marketplace with retail consolidation, online competition, AI and technology. And we feel we could be the expert aggregators in science, in training and technology in this new vision performance space. Excellent. And which which works in great to what I was going to ask you next is that you know, we all know there's more than, than just 20-20 vision at, at the end of your eye exam, right? I know on the, the NDV or neurodynamic vision site, 
there's a lot of scientific support there for this. Can you give me a, like a brief little rundown of some of that scientific uh, support that you have online? I'll certainly give you references because there's 40 years of uh, both science and anecdotal evidence in this field. I think it's been well established that the testing technologies that um, have been brought out recently to measure what we knew in the past but weren't able to quantify has provided a really an explosion of uh, new science. So if you look at the work by Dr. Greg Applebaum or Dr. Labby, um, and you can find those references either at OptiLab or sportsvision.nyc, a ton of real important and uh, highly qualified data studies. And you add the work by RideEye or Synaptic or NeuroTracker, you really can see the scientific benefits coming through versus our anecdotal evidence. Although in our center where we have NHL, M MBA, MLB, NFL, US softball, all those elite professionals swear by it. And I'm not sure that we have to completely dismiss the fact that athletes love it. And I'll, I'll put my son in that category as well. He swears by it and, and sees tremendous results. I don't what's know his, how uh, what's his sport? Uh, he's he's lucky enough to play uh, third base at a Division One college. Nice. In the US. Very nice. He's probably better at baseball than me. Then <laughs> he's he's better than a lot of people. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there as a guess. So, with respect to sports, something that's been really big in the media. And certainly the NFL, this has been, uh, you know, a lot of their coverage uh, has been concussions, right? So what sort of role does, does neurodynamic vision have to play with, with our concussion patients? It's a really interesting question. There's no doubt that immediate and the long-lasting impact of concussion has a direct effect on the visual system and brain function. And that is really the heart of NDV's philosophy. We truly believe in baseline evaluations, concussion protocols, and rehab can all be evaluated using the neurodynamic vision techniques, and optometry should be at the forefront of this eye-brain connection. We know that we can bring athletes back sooner and healthier using the latest in protocols and technologies. It's an important part of the wellness continuum of neurodynamic vision where you have high performance and elite athletes, you have stress, fatigue, recovery, and then you have TBIs, brain injury, concussion, and learning disabilities. And neurodynamic covers the full spectrum. We happen to be very focused on the sport and elite athlete side. Right. And often, unfortunately, the type of person who will get concussed. Correct. <laughs> Very important. For sure. So let's say an eye care practitioner wants to get started with a, with a, a neurodynamic vision type of practice, right? What's, what's neurodynamic vision's role in, in getting that going? I think that we are a model, we are a community, and we offer advice. And right in the beginning, I would suggest if you're going to do this Make sure you do it for the right reasons. I believe that you have to love what you do in the sport. And it's not just about the eyes. Uh, although optometry is dedicated to the eyes, neurodynamic is dedicated to the athlete. So dedication to the athlete, the love of the game, and really enjoying the thrill of improvement on and off the field are keys to this. And as I said, if we think about what we offer we can share our insights, uh, whether it's finding the right space, understanding time management, understanding available technologies, preparing marketing outside the typical patient base channel, train the trainer content, and helping you understand as much about the athlete, the sports, their goals and outcomes, because you really are dealing with an athlete with all their challenges. And so what sort of things would you guys be able to help us market this new practice service? 
and 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 as it's up and running, continue to manage it. The core of what we offer is the understanding that vision goes beyond 2020. It does go to the I mind body and how you can market those services to the entire base, coming in and introducing the various tests, the assessment, uh, help market the technologies, what they can and can't do, I think is important as well. Sure. And making sure that the environment and the space is conducive to athletes. It's very disconcerting for an athlete to come into an office and a 250-pound linebacker is now going to train in the corridor of the office. So we really do hope to bring the right mindset and in a brand experience, I think is probably the best word to describe what neurodynamic can do for an office. Great segue to what I was going to ask next, which is when the patient walks into the office, what would their experience look like? I think that we are very much interested in the assessment and uh, whether we're using various technologies to understand beyond 2020, what are the performance elements that are required in the sport and how does an athlete measure up in the beginning to that? So that's really the first step in any kind of conversation. Do a complete assessment and understand both strengths and weaknesses. And this is not just equipment, but it is how you would go about in a analog and a digital world training an athlete. After that, we would then create a plan that's probably an eight to 12 week plan and then go through and assess focus skills, accuracy skills, the multitasking capabilities of the mind and then the endurance. How do we get to that fourth quarter, fourth period, ninth inning and still not make the mental errors that are potentially created by the eyes and not the physical body. And this eight to 10 week plan is done in office? It's done uh, in our, today, Neurodynamic has a performance center and it's done in the okay. performance center. We would recommend those kind of programs for an office or a, a space where there might be collaboration between sensory cognitive and the conditioning and strength training of an athlete which is an interesting perspective. Sure. And what sort of, <laughs> I would call them gadgets, but what sort of technology would we need to, to do this testing and training? I, I, I like the word gadget um, because it does two things. One is it is a technology and it's pretty high tech. Yep. Uh, the other side of the gadget is that not used correctly or thinking that only one of those is a comprehensive view is, I think, would be a mistake. So we go through a, a various technologies at Neurodynamic, our performance center, we use the synaptic battery of tests. We use NeuroFit and NeuroTracker. Right eye is an excellent piece of equipment, as is the reflection edge and the sway balance. But we also investigate and see brand new technologies today, especially with augmented reality and virtual reality. We believe that limiting your training just to a monitor would be a mistake. And then we have many more training tools that are what I would call more analog, is how is the athlete using their equipment? How can we train those four areas that I spoke about? in focus, accuracy, multitasking, and endurance. Wow. So uh, your typical first time in the assessment process, how long can, can that process take? We typically spend an hour with an athlete in the first evaluation period. It might be a little more, might be a little less, but generally an hour is enough to give us a comprehensive view of their sport, understand their athletic abilities, where their challenges are. Right. And it's as much listening to the athlete as it is just doing the evaluation. I must say that we at Neurodynamic Vision and our performance center do not do prescriptions. So we start after a optometrist has comprehensively evaluated health right. and 
a prescription. So let's say I wanted to be a third baseman at a D1 school. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> not even possible. So uh, we've decided to do neurodynamic vision in our practice. We have invested enough space and technology to do the testing properly and touch all the bases that an athlete is going to need. What's one reason you think why people would then fail in this pursuit? I think it's a, a good question. When you think about the athlete, you have to understand that the athlete's mentality, their fears, concerns, knowledge, and compliance are real barriers to executing the training program. Given a 12-week program, two or three times a week becomes something that the athlete needs to have to board in, buy into. And all the great technology and all the evaluation of the eyes, when you don't take into account athlete's time, will result in an athlete not executing. And that's probably the biggest challenge that we face at the moment. Do you find, because I find athletes tend to, once they are bought in, though, will just almost to the extreme. Does that happen ever? It, it happens a lot, and, and that's where we spend a, a lot of time. Remember that the athlete's mindset is to train strength and conditioning. They are dedicated to rehab and recovery and often nutrition. So the challenge with sensory cognitive training is awareness, understanding, and belief. So it's a continual education and awareness that this can be trained and just because you don't sweat doesn't mean that right. you're not working hard. And in fact, athletes buy into the program because they don't risk injury to elbows, to shoulders, to knees. And coaches love it as well because it can be done indoor in the rain. So you True. can train in the rain. In Toronto, you uh, really train in the snow. But it, it really does keep the mind sharp without the risk of body injury. Once Why did you have to get that cheap shot in there, Horn? <laughs> it's my Southern California. I know. It's it's like, it's well, 30 degrees here isn't cold for you, but 30 Celsius to here today. It's beautiful out. Beautiful. Good. It'll be you beautiful for another week or two. And then you it'll have a couple of good weeks. <laughs> Thank you, Horn. <laughs> One thing that, as I was reading through a lot of this material, I thought would be interesting is, is, is there something that the NDV program did for a patient or an athlete, or the two combined, that you didn't expect? This is not an individual, but in general, the impact of how much confidence an athlete builds and the effect of the confidence that they have, both playing and off the field, has been amazing to me, where becoming visually dominant and having the confidence to deliver on their task at hand, which... We often talk about a baseball, a batter's goal is not to hit a home run. It's not to get onto first base. Their task at hand is to see the ball. When right. they are confident in doing that, the mind relaxes and their, all their work that they've put in results in tremendous, I, I guess if you're playing you know, baseball, it's to get on base or mm -hmm. to execute. And um, I, I'll use my son as an example, struggling during the season, hitting 200 after not tremendous amount of training, but really understanding visual tactics, some strengths and weaknesses. He went on to hit 320, 15 consecutive games on base. And wow. it wasn't all attributed to vision training. It was attributed to the confidence he had going on to or into the, the batter's box. And awesome. the mind then is focused on the task at hand and not the mechanics and the crowd and his anxieties. Right. So really what we are delivering is confidence to execute. And that just translates into much better performance on and off the field. That's awesome. I like that a lot because I, I do find as a very, very amateur tennis player, a lot of the you know, the chatter in your head when you can shut that down results in better performance. So I'm imagining if if you've already muscle memoried, for lack of a better word, your your vision to perform, one less thing to worry about that much better performance. 
Yeah, we often hear coaches and parents and athletes talk about you have to concentrate. And if you've ever been in the zone, and that that word in the zone is something where athletes try to get off and Mm -hmm. you actually find that you are not concentrating. So it's a counterintuitive approach. How do we relax the athlete in order for them to execute on their mechanics? Because as soon as you think about it, your mechanics become very slow. Right. And remember that whether you're a, a batter, a goalkeeper, uh, both in hockey or in soccer, a tennis player, you are working in the time frame of a blink of an eye. The 400 milliseconds that you have in order to react to any of those outcomes, the pitch, the slap shot, the penalty kick, the serve, means that you don't have time to think, see, and react. So what we have to do is put you in a a mindset of total relaxation. And when you try and concentrate, you think and you slow down. So we use visual tactics and strategies to quieten the mind in order to be able to fully react to all the work that's been put in in the mechanics. Awesome. Is there anything that I should have asked you, but I didn't ask you? <laughs> I think it's, it's around what's next. I, I certainly understand neurodynamic vision is new. We are always thinking about what's next. And we have to remember that sport is the pinnacle of cognitive function. But as I said earlier, the wellness, the fatigue, the stress, and the brain disease component is where we have to look at. So I don't want people, whether it be athletes, coaches, or even optometrists, to think that we're in the business of sports vision. We're in the business of optimized human performance through the eye and the brain. And we have to think about how that works throughout patients, not just athletes. And that could be functional benefits of a reader at 45, where there's this area of uh, denial that you don't need reading glasses because you still (laughs) see, really an optometrist can talk about performance vision and optimized efficiency, not just better vision. And that goes away from the 2020 into something where optometry lives and breathes. So this can be applied to myopia management. It can be applied to low vision, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, How do we think about the brain as the center of vision, not just the clarity of the eye? Awesome. I love it. I'm I'm, I'm very much, uh, I use the word a lot in the office, visual function, right? How does this help you get through the day better? Absolutely. That's it. You agree. That's the goal. If a listener wants to get in touch with you to, to have a little more conversation with you directly, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? There's a number of ways. I'm very active on social media, so please use my LinkedIn. It's under Warren Modlin or ModsMark. You can find that on LinkedIn. Our website, neurodynamicvision.org, will link to me. We also have ndvperformance.com. Both are, are the same entity, just different sides of the coin, one consumer and one science. Instagram is a great way to get hold of me at Neurodynamic Vision or NDV Performance. And uh, all of those connect, connect to my email, and I'd be happy to set up time to have conversations. Awesome. And I'll, I'll try to put links to all of that in the notes on the webpage for this podcast. Right. Warren, yes. it was awesome having you on. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks again, and we'll talk soon. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Look forward to continue conversations. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Eyes Wide Open. Please visit our page at iCareBusiness.ca for more information and links to today's topics and guests. If you're looking for an online optometric community, send an email to CanadianOptometryGroup at gmail.com to join the Canadian Optometry Group. You'll get access to a vibrant online community for Canadian optometrists. Thanks to our sponsor, Canadian Eye Care Business Review. Remember to visit them at eyecarebusiness.ca to stay up to date with the latest eye care news and lots of great resources and articles on topics like practice management, marketing, products, team and leadership, and finances and operations. And we'll see you next time for our next episode of Eyes Wide Open.